Hey what's up guys this is Sohan and you are watching your technical spark channel friends in our semantic endpoint protection manager series today i am going to demonstrate active directory integration because when you implement semantic or any new product in your environment your senior management or your colleagues everybody is interested to see the console and they will definitely request access to the management console so creating custom users is creating you know, lots of challenge and to provide the access if you create custom users then there is a challenges because user can use any password it could be a, you know a non secure or you know they will just you know use one of the plain password that can be easily guessable right so anybody can simply guess that password or do some random trial and get the access to your console but providing the access with the help of active directory is more secure because user has to adhere with the ad policies and the password gets changed time to time and to provide ad based or you can say active directory ldap based authentication your active directory must be integrated with spm console so how exactly you can do that so that is what i am going to demonstrate in this particular video so this is my management console very first let me create one shortcut on my desktop so that will be able to easily you know navigate all the things going further right so this is my management console so let me just copy this shortcut and paste it into the desktop okay so the shortcut has been created but before that guys okay so when you uh, double click on this particular you know console it is get launched right like this but how exactly you will be able to launch your spm console in the browser that so many of you guys didn't know right so for that also you will have to follow the simple procedure so this is my semantech uh endpoint protection manager web access okay so when i click on that browser will open and with the help of application like this right you guys will only be able to open with the help of application exe but when you open you know click on you know that particular things the things will get open into the browser i mean your web console my browser is getting updated so that's why it's taking time so as you could see my web console is now open to launch the web console you simply have to click on launch uh oh what it says you must enable the cookies so uh, which browser i'm using firefox so instead so what i'll do simply let's copy this url go back settings and we'll simply add here cookies okay manage exceptions add that add exception save changes if you are using an internet browser then you will have to so you know perform similar type of settings now let me just yeah it's already been uh refreshed so let's click on launch again Initial, initializing please wait okay our console has been locked so as you could see currently i am into the browser right so this is how you will be able to access the console and all the features and everything remain same the only thing is you will be able to access your spm console using the browser from any url okay so this is the url if in case you would like to access from any remote pc this is just for your reference because so many people are not aware that consoles in this acpm console can be accessible using the browser okay instead of logging into the server so now this is my application so let's enter our default username that is admin and password okay so i have entered the password now click on log on and it will now launch our spm console which means we'll get the access to the console i just rebooted the server so it's taking time but don't worry guys once your server is up and one time you logged in then the process will be little faster okay so this is our spm console now we i will simply have to go to the admin under admin click on servers so in servers you will see the you know under the site spm you will see this option okay one is one is having tick and another is don't have the tick okay so in this particular first option you will see the option called edit server properties click on that and then you simply have to click on directory servers and then add active directory is fine now we'll have to provide the name of the server so you can directly enter your host name ip address that is fine so what we'll do we'll simply enter the ip address for that what is the ip address of my server so let's go to the ad server so this is my active directory server let me check out what is the ip of this particular server ipconfig all 
so IP address would be 192.168.0.10 now let me enter the IP address IP address should be here and here I'll give the name like AD server 636 is a secure port used by LDAP now let enter the our um, username and password so administrator and password once you enter everything simply you know just go down and try to click on ok okay it's asking it's uh, you know is rejected so let me click on cancel uh, untick this and again try to correct okay it's successfully connected okay so as you could see whatever i'm doing it's generate the logs right so whatever the things you are always doing it's always you know create the record for the audit purpose so make sure you whatever things you are doing you do it properly now click on synchronize with active directory servers now how frequently you would like to synchronize your active directory with your sapm right so if you are not doing much things with your active directory when it's integrated with the SAPM then you can keep it as a 24 hours but if in case you are a very huge organization and always making some sort of changes then you know make it something like 4 hours every 4 hours uh, your SAPM has to synchronize with active directory something like that so for now I'll just keep 4 hours and click on OK now as you could see my active directory server is successfully integrated and connected with our AD I mean my SAPM server is integrated with Active Directory okay so things are done now we'll have to go to the again administrators inside this you will see right now we have only default user which is admin so what we'll do we'll add one more user for that let's enter the username like Sohan Chi this is my username let's validate from in Active Directory uh, once for that in Active Directory Server, we'll have to open our AD console and here we'll go to the users. Inside that, let's check out the user that is our what is the name of user? Then Sohan G. Okay, this is my username. Now let's cancel this and go back to our ESAPM console. Okay, our name is correct. Uh, full name we'll just keep it as Sohan Gole and email ID. So email ID would be like Sohan G at technical spark.com log the account after uh, the specified number of unsuccessful login attempts okay so pi is uh, you know default account and i'll keep the same send an email alert to the administrator when account is locked out so this is also one of the very good feature if you have smtp server integrated then yeah this is going to be help you a lot access right so right now we'll just give you know full administrator access okay system administrator but if you want you can control this with like limited okay what are the things you would like to provide you can do that this is something which we'll learn in our uh, upcoming videos under the end but yeah if you want to just give it you know limited access to somebody you can just give it limited and select the appropriate things and what is the purpose of these things uh, this is something which we'll you know learn into the further videos into the permission set okay but right now I'll just give system administrator authentication if you are creating custom user okay like this if this let's say this user is custom not the AD then you can go with this option first option which is by default selected and enter the password but if you can you would like to you know have this particular account to be authenticated with active directory then choose directory authentication then you are domain technical spark and now we'll enter our username Sohanchi and simply click on check account. Verify that this directory account is exist. By any chance, if you uh, you know enter something wrong, then what it will show? Check account unable to verify the directory account, which means this user is wrong. So let me remove one and again check account. Perfect. I will simply click on OK. Enter your current password to confirm the authentication change so uh, uh, the whatever the user id which we have entered while logging into the scpm server okay we have to enter that password again because we are you know uh, making very critical change which is we are you know creating one administrator account you know itself okay so have you know that's the reason it's asking for the re-authentication so let's enter that password and click on okay and see our account has been 
created successfully so far we never logged in so that's the reason you don't have much details uh, and guys one more thing if in case if you are using a uh, custom password now then uh, there's an option guys uh, configure password requirement okay so here you can restrict your account by giving some uh, you know complicated things like the password character length okay minimum maximum similar way limit you know last reuse password like those okay so this is also one of the good uh, practice to make sure your account is very much secure now let me log out from here options and this is how you will be able to log in now okay then enter your username and password and the password will be from ed okay not your local so if you directly try to log in without entering domain you can see it's asking for the you know certificate to trust simply click on accept and it will allow similarly uh, let me just log up let me again enter the username and domain name now try to click on log on accept see right now it's giving the error so having this domain name or i really don't know why they have kept <laughs> because this is something okay which i'm still question because when you we integrate with our active directory it should ask for the domain name now let me enter the password again and log on that's it so this now if i go back to the admission uh, you know settings and sohanji see we have details available when we have access the console last time last logout login time logout time ip address and other stuff so this is how basically you will be able to integrate your active directory with the scpm server and create the custom user and there is other features are also available uh, you know with the help which we can utilize of our active directory that is importing the group systems so many things are available and that is something which will which we will learn in our upcoming videos so if you found this particular video useful then please click on the like button and don't forget to share and subscribe. This is Swan signing out. I'll catch you in the next amazing video till then. Bye bye.